Many people are shocked to learn that circuit breakers don't last forever. Manufacturers state these things can last between 15 and 30 years, but that lifespan is gonna depend on a couple of factors. The first being environmental. If you've got a lot of humidity or dirt in the air, that's gonna wipe these things out much sooner. But the bigger problem is if they're frequently being overloaded, overheated, or you're just getting surges in your home, you could have something happen like this. The two sounds you hear are my dryer running upstairs, but the sizzling noise is the bigger concern. Now originally I could hear that noise across the room, and I wasn't quite sure what it was, but as I got closer to my panel, it is definitely coming from within that circuit breaker. Now if you've got a situation like this, you might not be able to fix it yourself. If you're not comfortable around electricity, this isn't going to be something you want to try. But the first thing you'll want to check is to make sure that the wires on the side of the circuit breaker are fully secure. Now this is a 240 volt breaker, so I wanted to check on both wires, and both of them were totally secure. I also verified that the circuit breaker itself was fully pushed in the panel and it felt secure as well. But I went a step further. Because this was running my dryer, I checked the dryer cord, the outlet, and there were no obvious problems. And because that circuit breaker is almost 30 years old, I'm not going to mess around. I'm just going to go ahead and replace it and see if it fixes my problem. First thing you need to do is get a replacement circuit breaker and you'll want to get the exact same one that you have in your existing panel. This one is a Square D QO model, 30 amp, 240 volt breaker. Now you don't need to remember all that stuff just match up the numbers exactly the same as the replacement model that you buy. You'll also notice that this circuit breaker panel is packed and I've got a ton of stuff going on including that loose wire. That's because I'm in the middle of hooking up a sub panel. Now you want to begin by of course turning the circuit breaker's power off and if you're really concerned go ahead and turn your main breaker off feeding your entire house. Now loosen the two screws on the circuit breaker and you can remove the wires. Now you can remove the circuit breaker itself. Now this may vary on different panels, but on this QO style panel, you just kind of tilt the breaker to the side and you can pull it directly out. Take a second to inspect each one of the ends of the wires along with the back plane of the panel itself. Now all this stuff actually looks really good and clean. Now let's move on to the biggest mistake that homeowners make anytime they replace a breaker. When you unscrew each of these terminals, it is so critically important that you put the wire into the right place. In this close up, you can see that there are actually two small plates underneath the screw. It is so important that the wire goes between the two plates. Do not insert it underneath the screw. A lot of homeowners get confused because they're thinking of this kind of like an outlet and some will even try to make a loop. That is not the way you do it and when you're done, each wire should look just like this. They go straight in and you tighten the terminal down and those two plates will squeeze the wire. Now this next step can be done a couple of different ways. Many people will put the breaker in first and then insert the wires. Here because things are so tight, I'm actually going to put the wires into the breaker first, then I'll press the breaker into the panel. But the job's not over yet. Don't even think for a second that those wires are completely tight. As you move them around, as you push the breaker in, they're going to adjust themselves a little bit and you need to make certain that they are still completely tight. Another mistake many people make is they don't realize that the circuit breaker is not completely in the panel. So take an extra second to verify everything you've done. Make sure it's pushed in all the way, tighten both of those screws up completely, and then you should be able to go ahead and flip that circuit breaker back on. And at this point, I could fire up the dryer and see what would happen at the breaker. Noise is gone. Now I checked this thing at 1 minute, 5 minutes, and even 20 minutes, and this breaker remained completely silent. So changing this thing out definitely solved the problem, but I really wanted to know what the heck was going on inside this breaker that could create that type of a sound. And with the rivets removed, I could see what was happening inside the breaker. Now remember, a 240 volt breaker is really two different circuit breakers together. So I need to check each side. Now first, I didn't think this thing looked that bad. In fact, I was surprised, maybe thinking that I wasted my money replacing this breaker at all. But then I got my answer. Take a look at this copper wire. It's bright and shiny, and that's exactly what it should look like. But as we get closer to the end, that shininess is gone. This thing is gray, and it looks really cooked. So I started to figure out this must be part of the problem but it was when I opened the opposite side of the breaker that I could really see an issue. And you can see this thing is scorched. And that was allowing some kind of a contact to happen, or at least partially, that was never supposed to take place. Now the way these circuit breakers work, they've got what's called a bimetallic strip. That means two different types of metals that expand and contract. And if the circuit detects too much amperage draw, it will bend in a certain way and then ultimately trips the breaker. But something clearly went wrong with this one. Maybe it was a surge, a lightning strike, and it burned one of these parts up. And that must have allowed the strip to expand just a little bit, maybe making some kind of a contact. Not enough to trip the breaker, but definitely not a good sound. 
Now, there are some cases where a noise from a circuit breaker is normal. A slight electrical hum or a type of tone coming from it could be completely normal and it might not be cause for concern. But if you've got any doubts, especially a kind of noise like I had, sizzling, popping, anything that doesn't sound right, kind of like a fire inside the breaker, you do not want to leave that for any length of time. And if you've got other thoughts on fixing circuit breakers or things you should keep an eye out for, be sure to comment below and let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more videos coming up.